The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Lucky's taste better. Now, a dramatic announcement. Tonight, Lucky Strike brings you the most dramatic new evidence of cigarette quality ever presented by a cigarette manufacturer. Dramatic because it offers you facts, authentic, verified, documented proof that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five principal brands of cigarettes. New because it sweeps away the smoke screen of claims made for other cigarettes. A month after month continuing study of the comparative quality of the five principal brands of cigarettes based on tests certified to be impartial, fair, and identical. And here's the result. By a wide margin... Lucky Strike is the best made of the five principal brands. Those are the facts, not claims. Facts verified by Froling and Robertson, leading laboratory consultants of Richmond, Virginia. They report, It is our conclusion that Lucky Strike is the best made of these five major brands. Signed, Froling and Robertson. Yes, friends, Luckies are made better. Always so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. A big reason why Lucky's taste better. And everyone knows LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. There's no substitute for fine tobacco. Don't let anybody tell you different. So, friends, smoke the cigarette that tops the five principal brands. The cigarette that combines fine tobacco and superior workmanship. The cigarette that tastes better. Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, during his career in show business, Jack Benny has received many awards, plaques, and mementos, which he keeps in his trophy room. At the moment, Rochester is in there dusting them off. Dog gone, Mr. Benny sure has a lot of trophies in this room. Here's the key to the city of Waukegan. Here's the key to the city of St. Joe. Here's a doorknob to Cucamonga. <laughs> they don't even bother to lock that place. <laughs> I better dust this plaque that Paramount gave the boss for making Buck Benny rides again. And this scroll from 20th Century Fox for making Charlie's Ann. And this memento Warner Brothers sent him for the horn blows at midnight. I'll be darned, it's still loaded. Oh, well, Rochester. Yes, boss. Uh, did Don Wilson get here yet? No, sir. Oh, Don, he was supposed to bring the sportsman quartet over early and let me hear the commercial. What's your hurry, boss? Well, I gotta leave. I've got an appointment with a music publisher about my song. You still got a lot of confidence in that number you wrote, haven't you? Well, why not, Rochester? It's a great song. And what a title. When you say I beg your pardon, <laughs> then I'll come back to you. <laughs> See, I wish Don would hurry and get here. I gotta get to my song over to that music publisher before noon. Yeah, you better not show it to him after he's had lunch. <laughs> Never mind the sarcasm. Just finish cleaning. Yes, sir. Uh, say, boss, you've sure had some of these things a long time. Here's your discharge from the Boy Scouts. Oh, yes, yes. Here's your discharge from the Navy. Uh-huh. And here's the one from NBC. <laughs> Yeah, an usher handed to me while I was running east on Sunset. <laughs> now, Rochester, while I'm gone this afternoon... Coming! Never mind, that's Mr. Wilson. I'll answer the door. Hello, Jack. Oh, Mary, I was expecting Don Wilson. He was supposed to be here half an hour ago. Well, Don's probably having trouble with his car again. You know, it's always breaking down. Oh, something wrong with the motor? No, he just sits in it and keeps breaking down. 
Mary, why don't you stop with those breaking down jokes and come on in, will you? Jack. What? I happen to be in the neighborhood, so I just thought I'd drop in. Well, that's nice, Mary. I'm glad you did. And, Jack, I got a letter from Mama this morning. Oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does the Dagmar of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. I love letters to your mother. (laughs) (coughs) 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 My darling daughter, Mary. Just a short note to let you know we are all well and hope you are the same. Well. The weather here has been changeable. And last week we had a thunderstorm. And lightning hit the barn. No damage except that the cow now gives Shama yogurt. (laughs) Cow. Mary, dear, you wouldn't rec- recognize your father now as all his teeth are gone. But it's his own fault. I warned him never to fall asleep in the subway where there are pickpockets. Your father should be more careful, Mary. <laughs> the reason Papa was... You think your mother is so funny, do not you? <laughs> the reason Papa was carrying his teeth in his pocket was because he bet on the giants and didn't feel like smiling. You know, Leo DeRocha would be happy to meet your father. What a pair. Lippy and gummy. <laughs> well, so much for your father. Now for a few words about your sister, babe. Oh, boy. This is the part I live for. Just get a load of this, Mert. Go ahead. <laughs> babe is very happy that she took that job this summer as a lifeguard because it resulted in her getting a steady boyfriend. He's a nice little fellow named Morton, and they started going out steady when Babe rescued him from drowning. He's kind of small, but you ought to see the one that got away. (laughs) Mary, you didn't tell me she was a lifeguard. I didn't even know she could swim. Oh, certainly, Jack. Babe's a regular mermaid. Oh, yes. It's a shame the wrong half looks like a fish. Any any more news, Mary? No, nothing important. Oh, well. excuse me, boss, but if your appointment is for eleven thirty, you better leave. It's eleven o'clock now. Huh? No, it isn't, Rochester. You're fast. My watch says ten thirty. Oh, well, mine says ten forty-five. Rochester, dial UL eight nine hundred and get the correct time, will you please? Yes, sir. The party line is on. Oh well, I'll turn on the radio. Maybe we'll get a time signal. Is she still on? Well, I'm not. I'm not taking any chance on. See if that song is a hit. Imagine what mine will do. Anyway, I'm not taking any chance on being late. If Don thinks I'm going to wait here for him and miss my appointment, he's crazy. What appointment? I'm going to a music publisher to see if he'll publish my song. Oh, Jack, you'll never get anyone to publish that corny song of yours. Oh, yeah, I won't. Well, just come along, Mary, and you'll see. Come on. Okay, my car's out in front. Well, good. Let's go. You know, Mary, the publisher's office is in Hollywood, so it won't take us. Jack! Oh, gosh, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't miss you. Well, it's about time you got here. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, but on the way over here, I had an accident. I ran into a truck and turned it over. Oh, my goodness. Was your car damaged much? I was walking. <laughs> Look, Doc. Doc. Now, I haven't time to stand here and talk to you. You promised you'd bring the quartet and let me hear the commercial. Now, where are they? Why, well, they should be here any minute, Jack. They told me oh, they... Oh, Jack, should... here they come now. Fellas, it's no use running because I haven't got time to listen. I've got to go over something. We're late. We're late. We're sorry that we're late. We missed the sunset bus. You know we're late. We're late. We're late. We're late. And mortified. We couldn't summarize. No one would stop and pick us up no matter what we tried. We yelled at every passing car. We nearly went berserk. We showed our tanners pretty late. But nothing seemed to work. So now we're out of breath. As you can plainly see, the only thing that we can say is LSMFT. Be happy and go lucky. 
Everybody should be happy and go lucky. They're great, they're great, we really want a state. You cannot beat a lucky strike, they're great, they're great, they're really great. And when you puff, no puff is ever rough. No other cigarette compares with lucky, sure enough. Now lucky strikes inside the back, oh, LSMFT. A better tasting cigarette, but that you will agree. But now we have to go, we have another show. And even say goodbye, hello, we're very, very late. You know we're late, we're late, we're late, we're late, we're late, we're late. Right, late. That's not the song I wanted Jack to hear. Well, never mind, Don. I can't wait now. I've got to go to the music publisher. And we better hurry or we'll be late. Yeah, so long, Don. Oh, so long. See, I told you it wouldn't take us long. Here's the building, Mary. Let's go in. Well, what far is the music from... Hey, public? Livy, Jackson, what are you doing in Hollywood? I got some business here upstairs. What are you doing here, Phil? Oh, I just came to my doctor's office. Your doctor? Is there anything wrong? Yeah, yeah. I've been having stomach aches, so I went to see the doctor, and he examined me and said I had an ulcer. <laughs> an ulcer? Is he a good doctor? I'm not sure. He said it was caused by something I ate. <laughs> No. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a treatment did he prescribe? Well, Livy, he didn't give me no medicine, but I got to watch my diet. I ain't allowed to put anything spicy in my food. Oh, like pepper, mustard, or ketchup. That's right. None of them compliments. That's condiments. <laughs> compliments. A natural mistake for a chap who's been getting them all of his life. <laughs> And besides laying off them spicy foods, Liv, I gotta drink nothing but milk for six weeks. Now, ain't that awful? What's awful about it? Milk isn't so bad. What does it taste like? <laughs> well, it's sort of, oh, try some and be surprised. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, we'll be late. Late for what? Well, Jack's seeing a music publisher. He thinks he's gonna get that song of his published. Well, I think he's got a good chance. You see, Mary? You see? That's right, Mary. No one can tell where you're gonna find a good tune these days. Now, you take that's what I like about the South, for instance. Uh, how'd you happen to write that, Phil? Glad you asked that, Liv. <laughs> you see, honey, one night a few years ago, I was having dinner, and when I finished, I looked around at the leftovers, and there was some ham hocks and turnip greens. So I wrote a song about the garbage, and it became a hit. <laughs> How do you like that? Come on, Mary, we've got to go. Okay, so long, Phil. So long, kids. Oh, won't you come with me to Alabama? Oh, Let's brother. <laughs> Jack, yeah. did you notice how Phil was dressed so neat with a tie and a carnation in his lapel? I wonder why. Mary, don't you know this is National Wine Week? <laughs> <laughs> Phil was named the great we'd most like to crush in 1951. <laughs> now, come on. You know, Mary, when the publisher hears my song, he'll be absolutely nuts about it. And you never can tell. It might even become... The... Hiya, bud. <laughs> Long time no see. Huh? Oh, oh, hello. Come on, Mary. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's... Let's get away fast. Huh? Uh... Who is that? Oh, it's that racetrack tout. I'm always running into him. Come on. Jack, what floor is the publishing company on? The fourth. You know, Mary, I've been so excited about getting down here, I forgot to eat, and I'm hungry, too. Well, there's a candy machine over there. Why don't you get a candy bar? I think I will. Let me see if I've got a nickel. Oh, here's one. See, they got a lot of candy bars in this machine. Got Hershey's, Love Nest, O. Henry, Lifesavers, Baby Ruth, and Milky Dip. I think I'll get that one, a Milky Dip. Hey, Bud. <laughs> Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. 
<laughs> Who, me? Yeah. What you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting some candy. <laughs> what kind? A milky dip. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Get a Hershey bar. <laughs> Why a Hershey bar? In this hot weather, nothing runs like chocolate. <laughs> but look, I, I want a milky dip. <laughs> Milky Dip hasn't got a chance. What are you talking about? Milky Dip not only has chocolate on the outside, but it has, but it has cream in the center. That's what will give you the trouble. What? Cream is hard to handle unless you whip it. I never thought of that. You really think I should get a Hershey bar? Can't miss. Look at the last performance. Last performance? Yeah. Coming out of the machine, Hershey was boxed in by Lifesaver, but got through the hole. <laughs> really? And Lifesaver was the flavor of I don't know. I'm still... Wait a minute. I know what I'll do. I'll get an Almond Joy. Why Almond Joy? Because in the package there are two bars, and I can eat them as an entry. <laughs> well, okay. It's your dough. <laughs> color drives me nuts. Now, let's see. Where's my nickel? Oh, here it is in my hand. I think I'll... Wait a minute. There's only half a nickel. Oh, no, it's bent. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't hold my money so tight. <laughs> I'll have to use another one. Oh, Jack! Jack, here's the elevator. Coming! Going up? Uh, fourth floor, please. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I want to go up, not down. Oh, gee, I was going down, wasn't I? Yeah. What kind of an elevator boy are you, anyway? Well, this is my first day. I used to own the building. <laughs> well, what happened? I bet on Notre Dame. <laughs> oh. Fourth floor. Well, here we are, Mary. Now, let's see. Where's the Kearns Music Publishing Company? I don't see it. Well, this office here is a recording company, and so is the one next to it. Yeah, they all seem to be recording studios. I'll go into this one and require, inquire. Jack, look, it's Dennis. He's making a record. Oh, yes, it is Dennis. We kiss in a shadow. We hide from the moon. Meetings are few and over too soon. We speak in a whisper, afraid to be heard. When people are near, we speak not a word. My lover 
making the musicians applaud, imagine. Uh, uh, Dennis. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, we just heard your record, uh, that song, and it, it was very good. Oh, thanks. The company thinks it's going to be a big seller. Really? What's on the other side? Oh, a very beautiful ballad. If you like to hear it, I'll turn the record over and play it for you. Hmm? Okay, let's hear it. Okay. make a record with her. Now, look, Dennis. Now, look, Dennis, I've got an appointment with Mr. Kearns about publishing my song. How would you like to come along and sing it to him? Well, I can't, Mr. Benny. I have to have a tooth pulled. Again? Dennis, you had a tooth pulled yesterday. You pulled the wrong one. <laughs> oh. Dennis, if you were silly enough to let Mr. Benny pull your tooth, it's your own fault if he pulled the wrong one. I wouldn't care, but he took the one with the gold in it. <laughs> now, look, kid, we've got to go. I'll see you tomorrow at rehearsal. Oh, Mr. Benny, would you mind having the rehearsal at my house? Why should we rehearse at your house? Well, my uncle is visiting us, and he thinks that I'm the star of the show. Oh, he does, uh. Well, let me tell you something. Oh, Mr. Benny, what's the difference where you have rehearsal? Let me impress my uncle, huh, huh? Yes, Jack, what difference does it make? Well, all right, Dennis. We'll have rehearsal at your house tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Okay, and be there on time, kid. <laughs> what? My uncle doesn't think I need you at all. Not <laughs> Come on, Mary. Goodbye, Livy. <laughs> so long, boss. Mary, don't encourage him, will you? Now, let me see. It's supposed to be the last door here. Oh, there it is. The Kearns Music Publishing Company. Jack, how did you get an appointment to see Mr. Kearns? Oh, it was easy. Come on, let's go in. May I help you? Yes, I, I phoned this morning and I was given an appointment to see Mr. Kearns. Your name, please. Cole Porter. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Who did you say you were? Cole Porter. Well, I I'm afraid I don't understand. Mr. Porter just left here ten minutes ago. Well, I'm back. <laughs> you certainly aged in those ten minutes. Never mind. Just tell Mr. Kearns that Cole Porter is here. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, who is this with you? Irving Berlin. <laughs> Mary, please. Now, Miss, tell Mr. Kearns we're here. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yes? Uh, Mr. Kearns, Cole Porter, and Irving Boleyn are here to see you. Well, send them in. Yes, sir. And, Mr. Kearns, if you should want me, I'll be at the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. What? Well, my doctor warned me, but I didn't know it would happen this suddenly. What are you talking about? You'll find out. You may go in now. Thank you. Come on, Irving. Well, Cole, I didn't expect to see... Wait a minute, you're not Cole Porter. Irving, who's... 
I mean, who are you? Now, now, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Don't get excited. I just had to get in to see you. You see, I wrote a song, and I want you to listen to it. Well, I happen to be a very busy man. I have no time to fool around, so please take your song someplace else. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I certainly will. Come on, Irving. I mean, Mary. Let's go. Uh, 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 now, wait a minute. Huh? Uh, perhaps I was a little too hasty. I once refused to listen to a song, and it eventually became the number one tune on the hit parade for ten weeks. And I don't want to make that same mistake. So I'll listen to your song. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Let's go over to the piano. I'll wait here by the door. <laughs> hmm. Now, uh, this song you wrote, uh, what's the title of it? When you say, I beg your pardon. Then I'll come back to you. Mary, come back! <laughs> the wind blew it shut. Oh. Well, leave it closed, then. Uh, please, may I hear your song now? Yes, sir. When you say I beg your pardon, uh, then I'll uh, come back to you. When you ask me to forgive you, I'll return my honey child. <laughs> like the swallows at Serrano, return to Capistrano for you. Uh, now, hold it, hold it. Uh, just a minute, please. Huh? Did you say like the swallows at Serrano? Yes. Well, where in the name of Downbeat is Serrano? Well, Serrano is a little town in Italy. Well, what are the swallows doing in Italy? Oh, for heaven's sake, everybody picks on that. Well, answer me. What are the swallows doing in Italy? Look, mister, if a man can wait around in a swamp for 20 years yelling, Chloe, I can have the swallows make one lousy trip to Italy. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Now, listen to the rest of this song. Well, all right, but I wouldn't if you weren't a lodge brother. A lodge brother? Yes, yeah, your watch chain. You're an elk, aren't you? That's Dennis's tooth. <laughs> now, Mr. Kearns, I want you to listen to the rest of this song. If you tell me that you're sorry, then I will understand. Neath the harvest moon, we'll pledge our love. And new. So, my darling, though we've parted, come back to whence we started. Whence? Yes, where? That's a poetic term for where. But anyway, Mr. Kearns, the music is the important thing. With your influence, you could get that melody on the hit parade. I couldn't get that melody on a good humor truck. <laughs> oh, yeah? hear any more of your song, so get out of my building. Your building? I've been on SMU. Oh, well, come on, Mary. I'll get this song published if I have to do it myself. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Lucky's taste better. Yes, Lucky's taste better. And a big reason why is that they're made better. Here's dramatic new documented evidence that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five principal brands of cigarettes. These are facts, not claims. Facts verified by Froling and Robertson, leading laboratory consultants of Richmond, Virginia. They report, It is our conclusion that Lucky Strike is the best made of these five major brands. Signed, Froling and Robertson. Yes, this dramatic new evidence sweeps away the smoke screen of claims made for other cigarettes. So, friends, whenever you buy cigarettes, remember the facts. Remember, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Remember the quality of Lucky Strike. Remember, Lucky's taste better. That's it. Be happy. Go lucky because Lucky's taste better. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday is fun day on CBS. You'll hear such great comedy shows as Amos and Andy, My Friend Irma, and Our Miss Brooks. So be sure to keep tuned in on CBS on Sunday. Thank you very, very much. Make sure to stay tuned in for the Amos and Andy show and follow the meeting. 